in this lecture we are going to discuss about the climatic controls so let us understand about the climatic controls here so when we talk about climatic controls do remember there are six major controls of climate of any place before we move on first of all we need to know what are these high pressure areas and low pressure and why they created and how they are created and why they are high pressure and low pressure distance from the sea does the distance from the sea has any effect Okay, we are talking about the climatic controls. Yes, very important. Let's understand here. Okay, let's take two examples here to understand. Just imagine about Goa. It is nearby sea. And just imagine about Rajasthan. Do you think the climate will be the same of both the places? The answer is no. Why? Let us understand. Hello students. We are learning the chapter climate and today in this lecture we are going to discuss about the climatic controls. So let us understand about the climatic controls here. So when we talk about climatic controls, do remember there are six major controls of climate of any place. Now which are these climatic controls we are talking about? Which are the six major controls? The first one is your latitude. So latitude where the place is, where it lies. Let us understand more about it. So due to the curvature of the earth, we all know the curvature of the earth, the curve which the earth has. Now due to this curvature of the earth, okay, the amount of solar energy received, that is the sun rays received according to the latitude and equator towards the pole. Now let us understand it through animation here. So we can see the earth here and we can see the sun. In the sun, when the rays fall directly here, okay, so this is our equator. So this region will be very hot, right? So this is your hot region because there are direct sunrise on this area. And if we see further, the rays are like this because of the curvature nature of the earth, okay? And the amount of energy, solar energy received in this area is less as compared to this area. So that is why if you see this area that is the equatorial belt, it will receive high amount of solar energy and that is why it is very hot. And if you go upper side, it will be less and if you go to the poles, it will be very less. Okay, so that is why there is a difference. So the temperature will be changing. So here we have warm climate and here you will have very extreme, it is very cold region that is your polar zone, very cold. Right? Now, further if we go on, altitude. This is also very important. So we are talking about climate controls. Altitude is also very important part of the climate control out of the six. Now, as one goes from the surface of the earth to the higher altitudes, in simple words, as one goes higher and higher, you might have heard from the people during the month of summer, they all go to the hill station. Now, why do you think they go to the hill station? The reason is very simple. The hill stations are cooler as compared to the other places. And that is the reason why people prefer to go to the hill stations during the summers. Let's understand more about it. So the hills are therefore cooler during summers. Why? Because as one goes higher and higher, the temperature decreases. Let's understand here how. So if we talk about 1000 meters, the temperature here is 24 degrees Celsius. If you go higher, that is 200 meters. 2000 meters, it will be 17 degrees Celsius. If one goes more higher, that is 3000 meters, the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. So we can see here easily, we can know that as one goes higher and higher, the temperature is decreasing. So that is altitude plays an important role here. Okay. Next one we have is the pressure and the winds. So let's understand about the pressure and the winds here. So the system of any area depends on the latitude and altitude of the place. Thus, it influences the temperature and the rainfall pattern. Okay, so we can see here. So these are your high pressure areas. Now, before we move on, first of all, we need to know what are these high pressure areas and low pressure and why they created and how they are created and why they are high pressure and low pressure. Do remember, very simple to understand. When we talk about cold areas or cold breeze, it will be heavy and those heavy air that is called or that is created high pressure. So do remember in your mind, high pressure, whenever we talk about high pressure, we are talking about the cold breeze, cold winds 
and if we talk about the low pressure we are talking about the warm air so cold air creates high pressure warm air creates your low pressure because warm air easily it goes up and it creates low pressure when we talk about your cold air it creates your high pressure this is very important to remember and if you observe that is your poles okay north pole and south pole they are very cold and here the air will be very cold and that is why it creates your high pressure right so we are talking about the pressure and the winds okay so further if we talk about the subpolar low pressure belt we have then we have your subtropical high pressure belt then we have the equator low pressure we have seen that equator receives large amount of solar energy warm air and because of the warm air we have the low pressure belt here okay so do remember whenever we talk about low pressure there will be warm air and whenever we talk about high pressure there will be your cool air and that is why this low pressure and high pressure are created okay so pressure and winds the system of any area depends on the latitude and altitude of the place thus it influences the temperature and the rainfall pattern as we see here how you can see the variation in the pressure belts right now distance from the sea does the distance from the sea has any effect okay we are talking about the climatic controls yes very important let's understand here okay let's take two examples here to understand just imagine about goa it is nearby sea and just imagine about rajasthan do you think the climate will be the same of both the places the answer is no why let us understand okay so the sea exerts moderating influence so that simply means those areas which are near by the sea for example we took the example of goa it will have moderating influence that means it won't be too hot during the summers it won't be too cold in the winters but if we talk about rajasthan it will be too hot in the summers it will be too cold in the winters okay so those areas those states those places which are far away from the sea they will experience the extreme climate and those areas which are near by the sea they will experience the moderating influence on climate as the distance from the sea increases its moderating influence decreases and people experience extreme weather conditions just now i give you the example of rajasthan they experience your extreme climate because of the same reason so we can see here with this diagram also we can understand okay so if we talk about day let's talk about first day here so do remember this is very important diagram to understand so during the day land becomes warmer okay and the sea is cooler sea takes long time to get warm but land gets warmer very fast and cool downs also very fast so during the day what will happen the land will create your low pressure and the high pressure is in the sea what we learned is the cool air has the high pressure and the warm air has the low pressure so we can see here how the breeze from the sea will blow towards the land during the day time so during the day time the air will blow to the land the cool air will go to the land okay but during the night you can see the land is cooler but the sea is warmer what will happen here so now in the night the land will create what it will create your high pressure and the sea will create your low pressure so land from the land the breeze will go to the sea so this is how it all works and that is why it has moderating influence also now this condition is known as continentality okay that is very hot during the summers and very cold during the winters very important to remember further ocean currents they are also very important of climate controls how let's understand now oceanic currents describe the movement of water now when we talk about oceanic currents they are the movement of water like rivers flow they flow in the oceans now if you observe here the orange lines which you see are the warm currents okay and the blue lines are your cold currents now what is their impact what is the effect let's understand so oceanic currents describe the movement of water from one location to another now this massive movement of water is influenced by winds waves rotation of the earth and slope etc 
and this is how they are influenced by what is the importance of this oceanic currents so let's understand the importance let me give you a simple example just imagine there is a cold current that means the area is cool and if the wind blow from that area will that wind have any moisture no and if we talk about the area which has warm motion current if the wind blows from that area will that wind have any moisture yes because of the moisture if these winds blow from the warm ocean currents they will have moisture and there will be rainfall nearby areas coastal belts but if the wind is blowing from the cold currents and there will be no rainfall in such areas and that is the difference it experiences right so ocean currents along with or onshore winds after the effect climate on the coastal areas just now i gave you the example if they blow from the warm oceanic currents they will carry moisture and there will be rainfall if they blow from the cool oceanic currents there will be no moisture no rainfall so for example any coastal area with warm or cold currents flowing past it will be warmed or cooled if the winds are on shore so if they are going from a warm ocean currents so it will be warm winds if they are going from the cool uh, oceanic currents it will have cool winds okay and western margins of the continents in the subtropics have deserts why because if they blow from the cool winds cold oceanic currents so the cool oceanic currents will have no moisture and there will be no rainfall and if there is no rainfall that area will receive no rainfall and because of that it will create deserts in that area because rainfall is very important right so this is the importance of this oceanic currents further relief relief is also very important climatic control how let's understand so we can see himalayas here are this himalayas important because we are talking about the relief feature so this huge mountains himalayan mountains very important why because they act as the barrier barrier okay they don't allow the cold breeze cold winds from the siberia to enter in india they block them and because of which india receives this climate which we have today otherwise the climate would be different so this cool breeze which are coming down to india they are blocked so this himalayan mountains act as a barrier so this is very important to understand okay so this is the importance of the relief feature what about if there were no himalayan mountains then this cool breeze could enter in india and the climate of india would be different and this area the northern plain it would be different right so relief feature if we talk about very important climatic control it plays a major role in determining the climate of a place high mountains act as the barriers for the cold and hot winds to enter so in this case the cool winds which would enter rather in india so this himalayan mountains are blocking them so this mountains are playing very important role for india further they may also cause precipitation now because of this mountains it also can cause precipitation rainfall if they are high enough and lie in the path of rain bearing winds so sometimes the winds which are going which might have moisture in it and because of the altitude height of this mountains it might shower rainfall might take place there and the leeward side of the mountain remains relatively dry but the leeward side will not receive rainfall so now we have to understand what is leeward side and what is your windward side let's understand here through this diagram so we can see here these are warm oceans and we all know where the warm, warm oceans are there if the winds are blowing from there there will be vapor they will carry moisture and because of which what will happen it cannot pass by this mountain so it will rain in this area so this area is called your windward side where the rainfall is taking place but what about the other part of the area where other side of the area of mountain is called that is called your leeward side where it is dry and it is also known as your rain shadow area that is a shadow of the rainfall that is called rain shadow area it does not receive rainfall that is dry region okay so this is the importance of this relief feature and we can see how it impacts so i think all these points we have discussed about the climatic control in this entire lecture are clear to you